Hello, my name is Ranger Lee. I was in an earlier video made by Tim. Um, so I'm here to do another interview. I'm from the United States, specifically Georgia, which is in the south of the United States, right above Florida. So I live in Stone Mountain. Um, it's a small town. I'm not sure exactly what the population is, but it's not too much. Um, I guess it's just like every other small town in the metro Atlanta area. Atlanta is the capital city and also the largest city in Georgia, for those who don't know. Um, there's just like small shops here and there. There's one main street and a bunch of different buildings along that. Um, and then I guess like the most prevalent thing in the town is Stone Mountain itself, which is a giant granite uh, mountain that a lot of people come to from out of the state and even within the state to come and hike. The ease of which I can do stuff in, um, even though I am Korean, uh, I'm Korean American, the issue, the main issue I think for me is just being able to go somewhere and being able to understand everything. So if I need something, sometimes I feel like even when I try to speak Korean with them, that some things would get lost in translation. Um, so I'm not as comfortable going and doing things like going to the dentist for a checkup or even going to the grocery store and getting stuff as I would be in the U.S. To me, that's the biggest thing. I am currently a college student. I wasn't enjoying what my major was, so my parents felt it might be best if I took a gap year and kind of explore what passions I had. And they thought that while I'm going ahead and taking that gap year to do something productive, so they decided the best thing to do would be to come to Korea and learn more about my heritage and my culture. And uh, that was about a year ago now, so I've been in Korea for a year. Um, and I think it's been a great experience overall. I really feel like I'm more in touch with my Korean side. Um, so that's my backstory. This is why I'm in Korea now. So my Korean family, most of them lives up or around Seoul. So it's every bus in Korea goes through Seoul at some point. So it's very easy to get to them. So I've met up with them a few times now. It was my first choice. There was actually when my dad first told me about the, the English teaching program that I applied for, I was a little against it because I guess I felt that at 20, which was how old I was when I left, I seem like I'm some old person who's been in Korea for a long time. Um, I just felt like I had everything figured out and that since I'm living in America, I had a very ignorant and I guess close-minded view that since I speak English, the rest of the world would also speak English. So I don't, I don't see any reason why I would connect with my Korean side, especially since my plan was to live in America for the rest of my life. So, um, but I gave it some thought. And I think after a while, I came around to that idea and my parents were happy that um, I came around to it. And that's what ultimately got me to apply for the program that got me to Korea. One year, just over a year now. I came in August, no, I came in July of 2019. So it's been over a year. The culture is a lot different. Um, I mean, just going off land mass, the size is very big, but the culture is definitely different. Just on, I guess, the very basic scale of, in America, everything's about individualism. Individualism and more about me, me, me. Whereas in Korea, it is a collective society. So it's more about the greater good of the society. So you see small differences everywhere you go. Like in America right now with the pandemic going on, people feel like their personal freedoms are being violated because they're told to wear masks. Whereas in Korea, everyone wears a mask. So there's not, that as an issue. I guess when I first came to Korea, it was very difficult because 
like I said, being the, I guess, ignorant, arrogant, close-minded person that I was, I thought my Korean was a lot better than it actually was. <laughs> so, I mean, even going to places like convenience stores or, or grocery stores, they would ask a question I wouldn't know how to answer. <laughs> um, so I felt very embarrassed and um, that was very difficult for me getting adjusted to the time zone difference, the culture difference, um, the language barrier. So all of that was very difficult for me in the uh, first couple of months. But after I got over that, um, it's been pretty much smooth sailing. I didn't really have any expectations for Korea when I first came. So because I did the English teaching program, I was told by my uncle that teaching Korean kids would be a lot easier than teaching American kids because for the most part they'll listen and they'll do things like clean up the classroom afterwards or clean up after themselves and they'll some kids will self-discipline. Um, I didn't really believe him, but when I came and I found that out, I was very impressed and amazed by that. I didn't really have any expectations. I kind of just said, because um, I don't want to expect something and then it'd be different. So I kind of came with an open mindset and just kind of said, whatever I end up with, um, I'll just go from there and then adapt. Um, yeah, I think they would say that for the most part, they are different from most Korean parents in the sense that my mom came over when she was six. My dad came over when he was 13. So they've been living in America for 40, 50 years now. So they're very well endowed with the American culture and like the way like American values and everything like that. They're very open minded. I'm not saying that Koreans are closed minded, but like they told me that unlike with other Korean parents, they're not gonna try and force me down a path for a career. They want me to, whatever my passion is going to be, to go ahead and follow that. Um, so that was really big and I respect that for my parents to do that. There's not a lot of Korean spoken in the house. Um, the only person in my family that speaks Korean all the time in my household would be my grandmother because she never really learned English when she first came over to um, America. Like we have family meals and we'll eat Korean food. So I guess that's something that'd be similar to what Korean people would have, but we don't eat out a lot, which I noticed that Korean people do a lot here. I think, personally, my experience would differ from a lot of the foreigners' experience in Korea because I am of Korean heritage. I'm not really treated differently than... Well, I am treated differently than foreigners in the sense that, like, just the other day, I checked in to a hotel with my friend, and I actually got to the hotel before he did, so I checked in by myself and they treated me like any other Korean person because they just, they looked at me and they said, oh, you're Korean. And they were asking questions about, um, like a questionnaire about coronavirus. Like, have you been anywhere? Do you have symptoms? Um, and that went normally. But when I came with my American friend, him being a white American from Ohio, they started asking different questions. Like, have you traveled outside of the country in the past 14 days? Have you been anywhere where you could possibly have gotten it? It really depends on the Korean person, but some are amazed that I'm able to speak English very well because I grew up in America. Other people are just kind of like, eh, that's kind of cool. But, okay. Uh, but for the most part, I'd say I'm not treated too differently by Koreans. They're just sometimes they notice that there's something funny in my accent when I speak Korean. And then they kind of ask like, um, are you, were you born in another country or like questions like that. But other than that, um, I would say overall my uh, experience in Korea as a foreigner has been very smooth and it's been a good experience. It's been a great experience, so can't complain. So take my answer from before, copy and paste it. I guess just overall I've had a very good experience in Korea, so nothing really stands out, whether good or bad. But... 
I think overall, um, the Korean society is very, everyone's hard working because it is a collective society, so they realize that they have to work very hard in order to attain anything. I wish that would be scaled back just a little bit because I think that sometimes Koreans do have a tendency to work themselves almost to death. And, you know, I see a lot of the Korean friends that I've made here, they kind of slave them, they're slaves to their work. Um, and I guess just coming from America where it's kind of, you can work hard and get rewarded for it, but don't overdo stuff because in the end of the day, you're not gonna, like, it's, it's not gonna be good for you. I wish that would be scaled back just a little bit. Um, I wish Korean people would be, I guess, more independent. But it is, since it is a collective society, I, I know that um, it's kind of hard to stand out or when you do stand out, it's amplified because everyone's doing one thing a certain way and for you to do it a different way. Um, people will attack you for it, people will, you know, but I, I wish they would embrace more, a little bit more individualism within this collective society. I lost weight. <laughs> so physically that, um, my Korean's improved. I guess my whole outlook on what I want to do has changed. Teaching in Korea has really made me realize how much I love it. So, um, I'm going to change my major and then my goal changed from living in America for the rest of my life to wanting to live in Korea. So I think that those are the biggest changes for me. I've come to realize that I have a harder work ethic than I actually do. Um, I guess because my parents were very hard on me back in the US. Not very hard, but they were always pushing me because they told me that um, I can do things, I'm able to do them, but I have a tendency to be lazy and slack off a little bit. Um, coming to Korea and living on my own has really opened my eyes to that if I slack off, it's not good for anyone, it's not good for me, it's not good for my students or my school. So um, I think I've come to realize that I'm a lot more independent than I actually am and that I can do things on my own that I didn't think I'd be able to do. I've learned that Americans act entitled outside of America's borders. Not everyone, but I think there are, there's enough where there is a stigma that Americans are very, they act like they take priority before other people, even Koreans living in Korea. Um, so I kind of try to distance myself from foreigners, especially Americans. Um, but I guess overall, that's like a, that's the biggest thing that I realized about my country for the negative. The big problem I had was that I've always been told, and I've noticed, I've just, I guess I've known this all my life about Koreans, is that they kind of worship America because they felt like America came in and kind of really saved them during the Korean War to help them like stop communism. And ever since they feel, uh, indebted forever to America, but I think with the younger Koreans, they don't feel that way. You see that a lot more with the older generation where they say like, oh, thank you like for being American and they'll give you like free stuff at restaurants, you know? Well, in the previous video, as I've already covered, I got chicken stolen from me by my neighbors. That's something that stuck out. Um, So my first time going to a convenience store uh, in Korea was a mini stop right down the street from my apartment. I went in because I was hungry and I was like, I gotta try and figure out how these things work. It's just a convenience store, oh my God. So I went and I got like a roll of kimbap, but I didn't see, but when I went to up to the cashier to scan it, apparently on the wrapper, it has like this thing that says, if you get the kimbap, you can get a free water or another free item. So I understood enough Korean where I can understand that he was saying, you gotta look for this item and then bring it up because you'll get it for free. So I said, okay. So I went to the, I went to the uh, refrigerator to grab water. And I was like, crap, what brand was it again? So I just grabbed one 
I brought it up and he said, that's not, that's not the right one. So I was like, okay. So I went back and I picked out another one and I came back and he said, that's, that's not it either. And I was feeling really embarrassed at this point. So he was like, do you, do you want me to, do you want me to get the right one for you? And I was like, no, no, it's okay. Just, just ring me up for this game up. He was like, okay, all right, here you go. And ever since, I was so embarrassed. I think for the next six months, I didn't, I didn't go back to that convenience store. Tim's house. Not because of Tim or anything. Just, just his house. You know, I like being a freeloader and going to other people's houses and eating their food. The mountains, any like lake park or anywhere that's like a very public area, they, Korea, unlike America, they do a very good job of trying to maintain their parks and make it look beautiful. So just anywhere outdoors in Korea, really, I feel like is very beautiful for me. So for me, especially someone that likes traveling, I would say that for the best place in Korea. The convenience of just everything, really. Um, being able to just wake up and you say, darn, I'm hungry. Like, let me just go down to the convenience store right down the street and grab something to eat. Um, everything moves a lot faster in Korea. So even when you do things that would take a long time in America, like going to the post office to ship off something, they make it such a hassle in America for you to do, and it takes a lot of time. Like going to the DMV and like doing all like just stuff that would be chores in America. It's a lot easier in Korea because everyone is moving so fast. They want to just get it over with. Oh, and the cleanliness of everything. Even when you go to like, okay, maybe not everything. No, 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 no. compared to America. Uh, like, compared to America, like when you walk into some place like a Burger King or a McDonald's, I'm naming franchises, so. Um, don't sue me, McDonald's or Burger King. Um, it's just, you know, the floors are sticky and like it's just there's trash everywhere, but in Korea they do a very good job of making sure those places are clean. 